Well, good morning to all of you as we gather together online again for our service in which we bring bread and wine before all of us. Um, I've, we've got music this morning simply because the choir, I think it's the choir of St Martin and Fields in London, have uh, helpfully provided us with some hymns. So I'm just going to have one at the beginning and probably one um, during the receiving of communion this morning. It's wonderful and amazing that they've been able to put these hymns together, as you heard them this morning, by recording each of their pieces at home, and then someone has laboriously put everything together to make the beautiful sound that we heard this morning. So thank you to them, and thank you for the, to the Church of England who've enabled us to download that music. So it's great that we're finding new ways of doing things. I thought it would be good if you listened to that this morning, you really don't want me singing along with them. So feel free to sing at home and I'll try and keep quiet and listen to the words when we do come to a song. So this morning we gather together again around bread and wine, giving thanks to God for all that has been, for all that is and for all that will be. Our words are taken from the liturgy of Easter, uh, for, for, sorry, for communion for Easter tide. And so we begin with our opening greeting as we welcome one another. Feel free to take part at home or feel free to listen in to as much as you're able to. Our opening greeting, grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. And always we come together to prepare ourselves and open our hearts to God. And so we come to a prayer of preparation. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And as we prepare ourselves, we are reminded of the commandments of Jesus. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, the first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Lord, have mercy. In baptism we died with Christ, so that as Christ was raised from the dead, we might walk in newness of life. Let us receive new life in him, as we confess our sins in penitence and in faith. And we keep a few moments of silence as we gather ourselves afresh before God this morning. And so we pray together. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life. To the glory of your name. Amen. And so as we confess our sins, God gives us his forgiveness. 
Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And each week we have a what we call a collect. A collect is a prayer that collects together themes in a service. And so it's a special prayer for each week. And this is the collect for this week. Almighty God, who through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, have overcome death and opened to us the gate of everlasting life. Grant that, as by your grace going before us, you put into our minds good desires, so by your continual help we may bring them to good effect. Through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. And so then we come to our readings for the morning. The first reading is taken from the book of Acts and chapter 7 and it describes the stoning of Stephen. When they had heard these things, they were the religious leaders, they became enraged and ground their teeth at Stephen. But filled with the Holy Spirit, Stephen gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Look, he said, I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. But they covered their ears and with a loud shout all rushed together against him. Then they dragged him out of the city and began to stone him. And the witnesses laid their coats at the feet of a young man named Saul. While they were stoning Stephen, he prayed, Lord Jesus, Receive my spirit. Then he knelt down and cried out in a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. When he had said this, he died. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And our gospel reading this morning is taken from John's gospel, chapter 14 and beginning at verse 1. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you're going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me, the time in the Father and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. 
If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Shall we pray? Holy God, we bring ourselves before you this morning, asking you to speak to us through your word. Asking you to plant your life in us and to grow us in you. We ask this in your name. Amen. So this last few weeks in uh, our Sunday readings, we've heard of the church growing. The first apostles, pioneers of the gospel, shared what they had seen and people came to believe that Jesus was indeed the Messiah, the Saviour. Many had watched him die and he'd been seen again by many after the resurrection. Paul tells us in his first letter to the Corinthians that Jesus was seen by more than 500 people after the resurrection. Christians were beginning to make their mark on society around them and pioneers were moving away from Jerusalem to share the news and so the gospel spread. But as we discover this morning, it wasn't without cost. Stephen, who had been appointed as an elder by the people, along with six others, as the first disciples began to look for others with whom to share their leadership, Stephen was stoned to death. He was passionate about the gospel, and having, having been brought into the, before the Sanhedrin to defend himself, uh, defend himself against claims of blasphemy, he spoke voraciously of the inability of religious leaders to see the truth of who Jesus was. Eventually, he was taken out and stoned to death. And witnessing that was a man called Saul, later to become Paul, another who became a pioneer of the gospel. Jesus had foretold that this would happen. Not specifically, perhaps, but his constant words to the disciples prior to his death were, do not be afraid. And in this morning's gospel, the words began with, do not let your hearts be troubled. In their context at that time, that was a difficult thing to take on board. There were all sorts of forebodings about what was about to happen to Jesus. But there were words, too, of reassurance. Believe in me, you've come this far. I'm going to prepare a place for you. I am the way. You have seen that. Keep following me. Keep looking to me. I will give you life and I will show you the truth. Do not let your hearts be trouble troubled. That's difficult, isn't it? I guess not only was it difficult for the disciples, it is difficult for us too because we are living in a time that is very troubling. We might at different times feel unsettled or disconnected or off balance, tearful, disoriented, anxious, frustrated, and be in places where peace eludes us. Where do we go to find peace when we're anxious, or patience when we're frustrated, or focus when we feel disoriented? Well, if Jesus is the way, the truth and the life, then he is the source of those things by his spirit. And so we are called to pray. For Jesus says later in this morning's gospel, I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. Inevitably, we need to look at the context of Jesus' words and understand that we're asked to pray in the name of Jesus and according to his will. And that means we need to get close. And in order to get close, we need to be conscious of the presence of God's Spirit with us, to stay alert to the one who walks beside us, to tune in and to listen. And when we do that, it might be helpful, if we know it, to name before him why our hearts are troubled. Not generally. We have 
a worldwide pandemic, but specifically, I need to pray for this person because my heart is troubled for this reason. And then we need to allow him some space to speak to us and speak to the centre of our need and to say to us personally, do not be afraid, I am with you. At the start of this year in our churches, we began a year of prayer. I spoke earlier in the year about some aspects of prayer. I encouraged us to use our monthly prayer diary, which has now turned into a weekly prayer diary via our newsletter. We had prayer gatherings, which I think we could, which I think we could actually begin to do online now with a little creativity. So look out for that in the next few days and weeks. Interestingly, I suspect that we have more time to pray now than we have ever had. But I wonder if we have the inclination. Are we struggling with it because there is so much going on in our heads and in our hearts that we struggle to find the mental or the emotional space to pray? If so, I want to offer you something very practical and very specific. You will remember, I hope, that in the period between Ascension Day this year on the 21st of May and on, Pente on Pentecost this year on the 31st of May, the Church globally will be praying under the banner of Thy Kingdom Come. This is a worldwide wide movement of prayer initiated by the Archbishops of Canterbury and York and year on year it gets bigger and bigger. Christians across the world pray during those ten, year, ten days and focus on prayer. The movement now involves all Christian denominations and I would like you and therefore us to get involved again. We can't gather together in the way we have done in previous years, but we can pray. Remember that verse, ask anything in my name. Well, in preparation for that, I want to ask you to do something specific. I want you to ask and start asking God to give you the names of five people to pray for every day during that period and beyond. Don't leap to the first person that falls into your head, necessarily. Just consciously this week, ask God to lay five people on your heart or mind and commit to pray for them. And as he gives you those names, as a reminder, place a knot into a piece of string. Now you'll see that I've already done that. I've taken a piece of string and I already have three names of people to pray for during that week. It's just a reminder really for me of the need to pray for those people and who I am praying for. I need to keep praying and ask God for two more people to knot into my piece of string. It's a very tactile way of remembering to pray for someone. Some of you may not need that like I need that, some of you might like to just uh, write the names of those people or the first name of that, those people uh, down on a piece of paper or on a post-it note. Some of you might, to, might, if you've got a photograph of that person that you want to pray for, have a photograph in front of you as you pray for them. But I want you to pray something very specific for them, that they would come to know the living God. Five people to pray for every day for ten days during the period of thy kingdom come. And here is a prayer you can use which I'll post um, after uh, the words after this service. Loving Father, in the face of Jesus Christ your light and glory have blazed forth. Send your Holy Spirit that I may share with my friends the life of your Son and your love for all. Strengthen me as a witness to that love, as I pledge to pray for them, for your name's sake. Amen. A simple prayer to offer for five people. 
You know, maybe now is the time to form good habits in prayer, and it does require discipline to pray for the same people every day. I am reminded that people prayed for me before I came to Christ. And if you listen to the witness and the testimony of the Archbishop of Canterbury, you will know that many were praying for him to come to Christ before he did. People he never knew. Until later, and they shared that with him. And so that's a wonderful thing. And I remain eternally grateful that people took a step of faith and began to pray for me. And I'm sure the Archbishop of Canterbury will also be eternally grateful for the, to those people. And someday people will be grateful to you too, because you took the time to commit to pray for them. And one other thing, during the 10 days of thy kingdom come, we're going to ask everyone to pray the Lord's Prayer at 12 noon each day. In light of that, those who share leadership in our churches are going to do some daily reflections uh, between Ascension and Pentecost on the theme of the Lord's Prayer. These are all simple ways to gather together, to pray together, remembering that we're doing that in our own communities, but people are doing that across the world, praying that God's will would be done across this world. So it would be great if everyone could take part in some way and commit to this, commit to praying for five people and commit to the Lord's Prayer each day. Because Jesus said, anything you ask in my name, I will do it. Shall we pray? And shall we just take a few moments of silence this morning and offer ourselves to God, but offer ourselves to God in a particular way, that we will commit to pray for five people and that we will commit to the Lord's Prayer each day and that we're looking to form good prayer habits. And then I'll end a time of silence with a prayer. Holy God, we pray that you will enable us in this next few days to be still before you. To just move away from some of the distractions around us in our own homes. And to listen to your voice calling us to pray. And to listen to your voice calling us to pray for people in particular. Lord, may we be open to your will in our lives. We ask this in your name. Amen. And so we continue in prayer. And we come to pray to Jesus, who is present with us to eternity. And in a response to our prayers this morning, I'm going to use the words, Jesus, Lord of life. If you can respond with, in your mercy, hear us. So that's Jesus, Lord of life, in your mercy, hear us. Jesus, light of the world. Bring the light and peace of your gospel to the nations. We pray for your church across the world as it ministers in sometimes extreme circumstances. We pray for Christians across the world who can 
no longer meet in their own church buildings and who are struggling with that sense of being separate from something important to them. We pray, Lord, that they might find comfort and solace, peace and life in the person of Jesus Christ. Jesus, Lord of life, in your mercy, hear us. Jesus, bread of life, give food to the hungry. We pray especially at this time for those in our own nation and in our own communities who are in fear of them and their families going hungry. We pray for those who have lost their jobs. We pray for those who have financial worries and concerns. We pray for those who still have mortgages to pay, bills to meet. We pray, Lord, that we might reach out hands of friendship, that we might be in a place to supply the needs of others. And Lord, we pray that we, we and you together might nourish people with your word. Jesus, Lord of life, in your mercy, hear us. Jesus, our way, our truth, our life, be with us and all who follow you in the way. We give you thanks, Lord, for our shared faith together. And we pray that in this time you would deepen our appreciation of your truth and fill us with your life. We pray, Lord, that we would learn in these times to place our roots deeper into you that we might trust you with every aspect and every moment of our being. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, sorry, Jesus, Lord of life, in your mercy, hear us. Jesus, good shepherd, who gave your life for the sheep, we pray for all those who today have gone into work, working on a front line that puts them at risk. We give you thanks, Lord, for all those who have served us over this last few weeks and will continue to do so. We give you thanks for all those who have worked in intensive care, those who are on hospital wards those who have kept the machineries of our hospitals together and working. We give you thanks, Lord, for those in our care homes, for those who are battling against a virus and finding that difficult. We pray for those who go into work fearful of what they might find. We pray for carers in our communities, we pray for live-in carers, for those who are in our hospices. We pray for all who are vulnerable. Lord, bind up the broken-hearted, strengthen the weak, be healing to those who are sick and be strength to those who are anxious. Jesus, Lord of life, in your mercy, hear us. Jesus, the resurrection and the life, we give you thanks for all who have lived and believed in you. Raise us with them to eternal life. Jesus, Lord of life, in your mercy, hear us accept our prayers and be with us always. Amen.
Now I always say at this juncture in our service, what we tend to do is to share the peace one with another. And usually we will do that physically by a handshake or a handshake or a hug, but we're not able to do that at the moment. So before I share the piece, what I'd like you to do, I'll just leave some moments of silence, is to just call to mind people that you haven't seen uh, for a while, people that you would just long to share the piece with. Call them into your mind and then um, I'll enable you to share the piece by just imagining them with you now. So let's just take a moment to call to mind the people that we're usually among, amongst on a Sunday morning. The risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then they were glad when they saw the Lord. Alleluia. The peace of the Lord be always with you. So now we come to bread and wine. And we say a prayer over the bread and wine. First of all, we acknowledge God's presence with us. The Lord is here. His spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, almighty and eternal Father. And in these days of Easter, to celebrate with joyful hearts the memory of your wonderful works. For by the mystery of his passion, Jesus Christ, your risen Son, has conquered the powers of death and hell, and restored in men and women the image of your glory. He has placed them once more in paradise, and opened to them the gate of life eternal. And so in the joy of this Passover, earth and heaven resound with gladness, while angels and archangels and the powers of all creation sing forever the hymn of your glory. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit, that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. For on the night before he died, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread, gave it to them, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this. In remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again he praised you, gave it to them, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. Bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation, we proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Jesus Christ is Lord. Lord, by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. You are the saviour of the world. Lord of all life. Help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people. Gather us in your loving arms and bring us with all the saints to feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. 
your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. We pray together. Most merciful Lord, your love compels us to come in. Our hands were unclean, our hearts were unprepared. We were not fit even to eat the crumbs from under your table. But you, Lord, are the God of our salvation and share your bread with sinners. So cleanse and feed us with the precious body and blood of your Son, that he may live in us and we in him. And that we with the whole company of Christ may sit and eat in your kingdom. Amen. Bread of Christ. Amen. Blood of Christ. Amen. Shall we pray? Eternal God, whose Son Jesus Christ is the way, the truth and the life, grant us to walk in his way, to rejoice in his truth and to share his risen life, who is alive and reigns now and forever. Amen. Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace and opened the gate of glory. 
May we who share, live his risen life bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us, so we and all your children shall be free, and the whole earth live to praise your name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, thank you for sharing with me this morning, and you're almost welcome to continue in any of our activities that we have over this next week or so. Can I just say, if you're not getting a news sheet by email and that is possible for you, then please contact me. You can do that via Messenger um, because you're obviously already on Facebook. Um, then just contact me and I'll get it sent out to you and that will tell you everything that's happening. Today at four o'clock, we're going to have a messy church gathering uh, via Zoom just to make contact with people and see what we can do to help them. And then at seven o'clock this evening is Compline. I'm going to take a couple of days off, Monday and Tuesday, but um, I've recorded uh, morning prayer and Compline for you. So that will be there on Monday and Tuesday anyway, and then I'll be back live on Wednesday morning at 7.30 a.m. Um, at 10 o'clock on Wednesday as well, we're having a um, coffee morning via Zoom. So please feel free to again contact me, and I'm happy to talk you through Zoom and see if we can get you connected. Um, and then on Thursday, we're gathering again for a tea service at 2.30. So quite a lot beginning to happen online. I know that's not ideal for everybody. I will be supplying some written resources for Thy Kingdom Come, um, and hopefully they will be uh, arriving this week so we can get them out in the post to people. So uh, lots happening. Please come and feel free to take part with us in anything that we are doing online. A final prayer of blessing. May Christ, who out of defeat brings new hope and a new future, fill you with his new life. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you and everyone you love and everyone you connect with this day and always. Amen. Live in the peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Much love to all of you and every blessing to all of you for a great day today. Enjoy. Find some peace. Do some praying. Bye.